two, Ghanaians wanted there to be availability of petrol. The third was for Ghanaians to get more in our resources. So we wanted to acquire more of our interest in our petroleum fields. The fourth point was that since 2015, Ghana has been part and parcel of the global climate change agenda. And we are in an energy transition period where we will move from heavy fossilized fuel to clean energy. And the fifth point was how would many more Ghanaians enjoy our God-given wealth. That baptism was hot, uh, but it also made me aware of activities of the great company in the country and what they were trying to do. The power setup is generally made of our three parts. Those that generate the electricity, those that transmit the electricity, and those that distribute the electricity in your house. We realized that the issue was between transmission and distribution. Then we realized that some of the lines in this country since 1967, that population have not been intensified or improved upon. So we had to be upfront with Ghanaians. That is my style. You have to speak the truth at every time, T. Energy Minister, Honorable Dr. Mighty Opoku Prempe, Adodona Friend and Apo, Eshemiese San, and Kani Ada Down Home and Nina, Ama and Kani Yenya Pomidi Pay. Nanso, Sankani and Sisua, won't you mean you say Dumi? Tinu Dumna, and Chenua Sanso, and Timus Yedum no Roman Timua, let us say Yedum, yes, yes. It was an issue because the lines were congested, were failing. People were not having reliable power. And because they were implementing a program to replace those lines and to improve the intensification, they had to cut the power. So, and in trying to tell Ghanaians what we're doing, is when in the same office I coined the frame Doom CSA. Gridco and ECG bosses spoke to this on generation not being the problem but principally transmission issues. I recall roughly when Honorable Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe assumed the role as the Minister of Energy. I was part of the management team and he visited us and challenged us based on the interruptions that we, we had in the grid, predominantly. Most of them had relationship with our lines going off. And because we are the bulk transporters, the impact on consumers was more severe. He encouraged us to take the work seriously. And what I picked from that engagement then was all that is required for us to do to make sure our lines don't trip. And therefore, based on that assumption, we modeled the change in the way we do our operations and created a section that deals purely with vegetation control. In Ghana, we've managed under its leadership to beef up particularly the line between um, Kumasi to Burkina Faso, uh, to Ghana border and then to Burkina Faso, which um, to the ordinary person means um, there's going to be um, a lot less losses the transmission losses, and that is significant. Still in the power sector, the commissioning and coming on stream of the Pokwasi Bulk Supply Point and Kaswa Bulk Supply Point brought remarkable improvement in the reliability of power supply to their respective environs. The Ellen Moran Primary Substation, 78 megavolt amp in Kanda, and the Legon Primary Substation, 52 megavolt 
amp also came on board. In addition to this, the 330 kV Kumasi to Bogatanga transmission line project and the Volta to Achimota to Malam 161 kV line upgrade were both completed and commissioned. Again in the power sector, but this time focusing on renewable sources of energy, the BPA 50 MW solar was completed in 2021 and the 550 kW Jubilee House rooftop solar phase 1, 550 kW project has also been completed. The 19 MW Kalio Laura project is 100% completed and was commissioned in August 2022. At the distribution end of the power value chain, the ECG under Dr. Prempe has made several important strides in improving their systems and services in a bid to make the entity viable and fit for purpose. When he got in, what he had to do on his side policy-wise with the, with the requisite ministries, he did it to make sure that the power plants were fully resourced for ECG to distribute the power. Because if the power is not being generated, that's when you have the power cut situations. But under his tenure, He's been able to negotiate a lot of things where there's excess gas, there's enough for the power plants to produce enough power for us to be able to distribute for every home to get their fair share of power for consumption. The Northern Electricity Distribution Company, NETCO, the ECG's counterpart responsible for Northern Ghana, has also witnessed some interventions under Dr. Prempe. The ADG Task Force uh, has been in the drawing board for a long time and uh, it took the skills and experience of the Honorable Minister Dr. Matu Poko Prempe to navigate around the launch of this uh, task force. Tamale is the area that we experience the biggest distribution energy losses. And so it was just wise and appropriate that in launching such a task force that will help in raking in more revenue for NETCO and also fight the energy theft, the choice of the venue for this launch was very important. And so with his support and wisdom, he directed that we do it in Tamale, and especially in Yendi, where the overlord, the Yama, resides. Apart from this, he has also helped us to launch our Momo platform, where customers are able to buy electricity with the use of their phones. There appears to be a general clear consensus that the lights have been kept on under Napo, particularly so during the current challenging economic situation in the country. But this time, light He has done a very, very good job. He's done very, very well. Because during this era, the lights are very stable. And if the light should go off, within an hour or two, the lights will be back. At times, it's even take about some 15, 20 minutes, the lights are back. Yeah, the energy minister Nasi said, well, boy, he said, I'm going to get some petrol top. He said, I'm going to get light in the house. I'm going to get the light in the house. Each time this country faces an economic crisis like we have, yeah. the first symptom is doom so. That's true. One of the main symptoms you see I is doom so. 2014, remember 2013, 2014, when we have the longest doom so ever. It's because we have an economy who went to the IMF. Mm -hmm. It go to Kufour had his own problem, right? Yeah. Mills had his own doomsaw problem. Jerry Rawlings had his own doomsaw problem. We are in the deepest economic crisis we faced since the 80s, right? That's true. And somehow the lights are still on. 
The petroleum sector has also been very busy under Dr. Prempe over the past two years in trying to keep the nation moving. While there has been pricing challenges in recent times, there has been no shortage of petroleum products as has pertained in other parts of the continent. Due to innovative measures taken by government through the Energy and Finance Ministries together with the Bank of Ghana, with the rollout of the Gold for Oil program, it is expected that the foreign exchange challenges and the nation's procurement challenges will ultimately drive down the price of petroleum products. The Gold for Oil program is a collaboration between the Ministry of Energy, Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, PMMC, Bank of Ghana, with support from the Ministry of Finance. In addition to our engagement with the fund, we're also seeking and implementing some original and innovative ideas to try to solve our problems. For example, the Gold Purchase Program by the Bank of Ghana and the Gold for Oil Policy are creative uses of our resources which are already bearing fruit. These policies are aimed at achieving two results that are critical to the health of our economy. Firstly, they will help us preserve foreign exchange, especially the U.S. dollar. And secondly, they will enable us to stabilize the price of oil products such as petrol and diesel on the domestic market. We have already seen some success on both fronts, with the price of U.S. dollars and petroleum products falling since we announced the policy and, and began to implement it. The Petroleum Commission is responsible for regulating the petroleum upstream sector and considerable work has been done in that area over the past two years. I also say that one of the things that Dr. Prempe has brought to the industry is the amendments that we, we have seen currently to LI-220 for the Petroleum Local Content and Local Participation Regulations of 2013, LI-2204. That has been amended to make way for other options for international oil companies and international service companies to do business in Ghana, two of which I recall are strategic alliances and also channel partnerships, which didn't used to exist, you know, in our upstream oil space. The National Petroleum Authority, regulator of the petroleum downstream sector, has also been busy with enhancements of its operation against dumping and smuggling. It is also working on LI to strengthen local content in downstream sector. Dr. Prempe is keen on the establishment of a petroleum hub, which is one of the government's strategic private sector-led anchor initiatives that would serve as a new pillar of growth in the Ghanaian economy. This 60 billion US dollar space project will be a significant addition to Ghana's economy as the country would become a net exporter of petroleum products. As part of the petroleum hub business, then the president got us to pass the Petroleum Hub Development Corporation Act. That was way before um, actually Matthew Popo Kuprempe came to the Energy Ministry. But beyond the passage of the Act, that was it. But ever since he's come into the Ministry of Energy, he's taken it and run with it. For example, now land has been acquired, officers have been appointed, chief executive, deputies, all of those things. Uh, the minister himself has gone on road shows in, in America, in Europe, in Asia, um, to woo investors. And my understanding is that as a result of those road shows, a number of investors have already come and the processes are on. Clean energy has been a huge conversational topic around the globe for some time. Under Dr. Prempe, the energy transition framework has been developed to provide path to achieving net zero emission by 2070 while ensuring socio-economic growth and the utilization of Ghana's natural resources. Ghana is a signatory to the Paris Accord that we will reduce emissions, carbon emissions, and emissions of other greenhouse gases in order to contribute our part to the global effort of reducing temperature rise to about 1.5 degrees Celsius. It is in this light that the Minister for Energy, Honorable Dr. Matthew Opokoprempe, under the direction of His Excellency the President, decided to launch a process that would lead to the development of an energy transition uh, framework for Ghana. The framework was launched by His Excellency the President of the Republic at the Climate Change Conference, COP27, in Egypt in November 2022. As part of the project, we are 
going to be installing 1089 net metered solar PV systems and basically what that is going to do is that public institutions that are benefiting from this project would be able to produce their own electricity use it during office hours and any excess that is left can be fed into the national grid that the utilities can take and use for or sell to other customers to promote clean cooking and discourage the use of wood fuel in the country the minister has also undertaken several campaigns to create public awareness the minister has been a big champion of clean cooking and has joined the second lady her excellency mrs samira balmia on various local and international platforms to make the case for this since the Honorable Minister Dr. Prempe took over the administration of this ministry, he's been so passionate about it. He's been a strong advocate for clean cooking and he's moved uh, the whole sector to the front burner to the extent that it has attracted the attentions of many international and development partners who are willing to support Ghana to increase access to clean cooking. The key interest that it has shown in the LPG uh, program that we are pursuing here at Ministry clearly shows that indeed he's a medical doctor and takes health seriously and especially for that matter the health care of our uh, women folks who are primarily and uh, traditionally uh, the ones who cook and our cooking style and you know here in this country. Ghana is also taking bold strides on the inclusion of nuclear power in Ghana's energy mix. Ghana's nuclear power program is currently in the phase two. We have completed phase one. And before Honorable Matthew Proko Prempe came to the Ministry of Energy, we were looking for a way that the president will make a declaration and the way forward for our nuclear power program. He was able to convince his explaining the president that nuclear power is the way forward to decarbonizing our energy mix and also to make sure that we have competitively priced energy in the future for our energy security. If there's one thing everybody should learn to do, every six months or at least once a year, write your own obituary that if you are no longer alive from tomorrow, what would people say about you? The, the kind of leadership is provided to us here in this ministry. We are three deputies and um, I'm not going to talk about the past, but you hardly will see three deputy ministers always together with their minister, okay, in meetings and programs. And that is what you see with uh, uh, the, 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 Dr. Prempe. He wants all of us to be with him when he's conducting meetings, you know, in order for all of us to be abreast uh, of, of issues so that at any time he's not around, any of us can be called upon and we will be able to properly and effectively represent him. He also has his personal touch which you know makes it very easy for one to go to and you know discuss anything under the sun i i think that he's been a great addition to the the energy space of this country he's not an armchair minister a minister who just sits in his office and giving directions napo is a filled man his leadership structure is something that needs to be emulated because he's actually a very people oriented person and it actually helps a lot. Although I knew he was doing uh, medicine, but he's really endured himself to the business that we do. His drive, his passion for the job, his well, wide reading, uh, leaves you with no room than to, as, as always, try to catch up. He's brilliant, he's very good, and his ability to grasp um, issues and sometimes phenomenal. You sit in meetings with him and not knowing much about the issue before you know it, he is teaching the people who brought the issue. He's been action packed. He likes results. He's a results oriented person. You know, he doesn't give in to gossips, you know, which is also another strong feature of his. He's a rounded human being 
Um, he can be very, very friendly. At the same time, he can be very stern. And I think that that's the mark of a good leader. He doesn't forget anything at all. Brilliant guy, he's very intelligent. And therefore, you know, if he asks you to do something and you think he has forgotten, he never forgets. So you can't be sneaky around him. Thank God we are moving on all those things. And we are moving on because God is with us. One, two, we have wonderful and exemplary leadership in His Excellency the President. Three, those of us in the Ministry of Energy are very, very focused that we hardly get distracted by the noise out there. Because, you know, I don't wake up in the morning expecting praises left, right and center. I don't. Neither do I wake up expecting that good will be said about us. So the focus in governance, the persistence, the doing honest work, being transparent, bringing the population around, explaining to the population, they knowing that they can see. If you are lying to Ghanaians, they see it. They want to see the practical application of what you claim you are doing as a Minister of Energy in their lives. That's what Ghanaians will look. All like we can request from Ghanaians is forbearance, patience. But the country is in the best capable hands that the alternatives are there. Alternatives we have lived under. Alternatives we've seen. So, I take my work here as like an evangelism. Evangelism showing the good works and working hard to win souls and converts to the good governance of a new patriotic party leadership. With the huge successes over the past two years in keeping the lights on and the nation moving, there is no doubt that Dr. Prempe has brought to the energy sector what may be described as the Napo touch. The future is indeed bright. Thank you.